Okay, take out your notes. Piecewise functions, chapter two, section five. First day, we'll do this a little bit today and we'll do it a little bit next time class meets. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to, whoa, we're not gonna do that. Holy cow, we got a problem. First mistake of the year. All right, we're gonna go and we're gonna graph this and we should all know how to graph that. Uh, slope of three, y-intercept of negative one, no big deal, here we go. And we're gonna need to go both directions, so we do need to understand how the slope works coming down, one, two, three, one, and then we connect the dots. Okay, let's assume I connected those dots, I'm doing the best I can. All right, so then we, we're gonna have a lot of horizontal lines with this one, so let's go to one, two, three, four, and we're going across, okay. And then a uh, reminder of point slope. And the, the nice thing about point slope is we have the point, which is 9, 3, and we have a slope of negative 1 half. So I can go to 9, 3, which I think is all the way over, and I can apply a negative slope. And I like to think about, you know, this was a positive slope, and now I'm going to do a negative. Up uh, 1 left 2, up 1 left 2. I think I missed one there. Oh, I screwed up that one. Let's go here, let's go here, and let's go here. Okay, let's assume I got that right. All right, so none of us that are paying attention have a problem graphing those three lines. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to say, okay, I only want to graph this one when x is less than or equal to negative 1. So I'm saying, what is the graph? And now I'm gonna say, where are we gonna graph it? And I'm gonna say I'm gonna graph this one from greater than uh, negative one, and I'm gonna say less than five. And then down here, this line, I'm gonna say greater than or equal to five. Now, when I change this, works better on a whiteboard, but I'll, uh, I'll adjust. So now I'm gonna get rid of this red line. So here's where it's negative one. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. You don't have to get rid of this on your paper. Just have the three lines, okay? I just wanna show you exactly what we're gonna do. And it's like, we all have no problem graphing these three lines independently, but once I ask you to do it, uh, three different pieces on the same graph, hey, pieces, piecewise coincidence oh I think not and now I'm getting rid of the green line and I'm getting uh, oh no I wanted to get rid of the green line oh I gotta go further I want to get rid of the green line all the way up here to and I can get rid of my mistakes one two three four five all the way up to this point okay and then I the blue line okay the blue line is negative one so all of this out here goes away okay and all of this over to the right of five goes away. I don't want to erase my green one there though. So now we can start to see what we're gonna have here. When I have it this direction, but we do need to worry about these endpoints a little bit. So notice it says my, the red line is uh, greater than, less than or equal to at negative one. So I'd be a closed circle here. The blue one is just greater than negative one, so I have to have an open circle and an open circle, and the green one is gonna have a closed circle there going to the right. So again, it's a function. The vertical line test passes. It's just I have one, two, three pieces of each of the individual graphs that we want. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna write a function. So we put a big old f of x over here. We put a big old set of chicken lips right here, also known as braces. And then I like to just say, what are we graphing? And where are we graphing it? So this is a great way. So I'm going to have three different lines. If, where are we graphing it? If, where are we graphing it? If, where are we graphing it? Let's start with the blue line and I'll get a blue pen to do the blue line. First thing I like to do is I like to calculate the slope. Up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one. The slope is one, but in order to find the y-intercept, I'm gonna need to keep going or I'm gonna need to use point slope. It's just easy to keep going. 
up one right one, up one right one, up one right one, up one right one. I believe it would cross at four, okay? So I have a slope of one. So it's y equals one x plus four. But I'm doing it from here backwards, and that's an x value of negative four. So I'm gonna say if x is less than negative four. Next, my red line. My red line is going to be easier to read because it does run into a y-intercept of 5. And let's calculate the slope up to right one, up to right one, up to right one. So this is 2x plus 5, but it's from negative 4 included to 1 included. So I'm going to go x. i got to go a little higher here because my pen's too big. Greater than or equal to negative 4 less than or equal to positive 1. So where on the x-axis are we graphing it? That's the question we're answering. Then I grab my green pen, and I'm going to get my green pen, and I'm going to go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. That's a negative slope, and I'm going to go the other direction to find that y-intercept. Notice the y-intercept is not included in this part of the graph. So I have negative x plus 3. But it's still needed to support the other part of the of the graph and that's if x is greater than 1 so oftentimes we like to section off the graph there was the green part there was the blue part and here was the red part and then I say where is it graphed and what is the graph okay we start with a start with a pretty basic one here graph y equals x minus 1 if x is less than or equal to 3. One thing I really like to do, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go, here's where x is 3. So when I'm less than it, on this side of it, I'm graphing y equals x minus 1. On this side of it, I'm graphing y equals negative 1. So that's a horizontal line. Okay. What I like to do is I like to get the boundary point. I can plug this in. f of 3 equals 2. Well, I'm going to go to 3, 2, and I'm going to fill in my circle. And then I'm going to apply the slope of positive 1. Positive 1 would go like this, correct? But I only want my slope going this direction because I'm only graphing it. Hey, there's the y-intercept of negative 1, which most of you are tempted to use. I only want this graph going back this direction. That's the part of it we want. It does exist over here, not in our example, though. Now, I'm going to graph the horizontal line, and we like horizontal lines, because I'm going to be negative 1, negative 1. I would be here. Here's my negative 1. But I only want to do it not equal to 3, but everything to the right of it, okay? Now, we're not going to worry about the domain and the range today, okay? Don't worry about that. Uh, all of these are going to be functions. They pass the vertical line test. Now, f of negative 3, I can go to x is negative 3 and go 1, 2, 3, 4. The answer is going to be negative 4. Or I can go up here and say, hey, is negative 3 going to be with the top equation or the bottom one? Well, I know that negative, an x value of negative 3 is less than 3. So negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. 3, I need to be with the top one. Again, I could go on the graph, 3, 2, uh, which is actually right here. Uh, it doesn't fit on the bottom one because the filled-in circle is up at the 2. 6 is greater than 3. I could go on the graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I would be at negative 1. I could also go up here and say, hey, 6 is greater than 3. It's got to be that one. Let's try this one. Now my breaking point is negative 1. Oh, they mixed it up. To the right of it, I'm going to be y equals 2x plus 1. To the left of it, I'm going to be y equals negative 3. I kind of like to do the easier one first. So let's go to where x is negative 1 and go down to negative 3. Build in circle. It's a horizontal line, and it's going this direction. Up here, I'm going to get that blue one so we can match up our colors. 
like a good little elementary teacher. And I go over here and I put in a negative one. So f of negative one is equal to negative two plus one is negative one. So I'm gonna start at negative one, negative one, but it's gonna be open. Oh, that's a big open circle because I have a pattern problem. I'm gonna go up to right one, up to right one, up to right one, and then I'm gonna draw a line. So I have graphed, I have graphed two x plus one, but I only did it where the values are, x values are greater than negative one. I have graphed y equals negative three, but I only did it less than or equal to negative one. Either look at the graph or plug these in. I'm equal to here, it's gotta be negative three. I'm less than negative one there, it's gotta be negative three. Six is greater than negative one, it's gotta be up there, 12 plus one is 13. So this is a good example down here that uh, 6, 13 is not on the graph, but you can read the equation to know which one you need to be using. Identify the piecewise function. I see two pieces, so I write a big old f of x equals, I write a big old set of chicken lips, braces. What are we graphing? Where are we graphing it? Okay. Let's see if we can figure this out. I'm gonna do the left half first. It looks like I'm graphing it. Sometimes it's easier to figure out where you're graphing it. I'm graphing it where the x values are less than negative four. Notice this has an open circle and I'm going to the left. This one has an open, a closed circle going to the right, so it's where the x's are greater than or equal to um, positive four. Again, I'm talking about the x values. Some people get hung up on the y values. We don't worry about y for much of anything. Um, when I'm talking about this one, I'd find two points. It looks like that's a point and that's a point. It looks like I have a slope of two, up to right one, up to right one, up to right one, up to right one, up to right one. Oh, I got it all the way to 10. So I just chased it all the way to 10. So I got two x plus 10. Y equals two x plus 10 if x is less than negative four. The other one is a horizontal, and it's where y is 7 of all the time. Remember, we're reading from over here. f of x or y equals this one. f of x or y equals this one. Okay, we got a triple now. We got a triple. Let's see if we can graph this sucker. There's a lot going on. So what do I got here? I got red. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a little line here. Uh, less than 1. There is 1. So I'm going to graph y equals negative x plus 2 over here. 1 to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm doing a horizontal. That'll be easy. Don't, don't, the horizontals are like free money, man. And then uh, x is greater than 5. They wrote that backwards. Ah, we live in America. We should write it from left to right. It's okay, though. And then over here, I'm going to do 1 half x plus 1. Okay, I'm going to start with this one. Again, I'm going to get a boundary point. And I'm going to do, uh, for that top one, f of 1 is equal to 1. So I'm going to go to 1, 1, and I'm going to have an open circle. So an open circle at 1, 1. Again, I have to be going to the left, so I want to think about a negative slope. I find one of the biggest problems people have with this stuff is the slopes. So a negative slope. So i got to go this way with it. Hey, there's that y-intercept we were looking for. And we go this direction. There we go. Very nice. Next, let's get a different color just for, for, for effect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do purple. Gracie would love it. Horizontal line of y equals 2. Horizontal line. But I want to run it from here, and it's equal to, and I'm running it all the way to here where it's open, and I connect them. Okay, and now this one. This is where uh, life can be... Uh, 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 slap you in the face a little bit because fractions. Fractions are not your friend, but you're going to be okay. Put a 5 in there. F of 5 for this bottom one is uh, 5 over 2 plus a half. That's, that's 3 and a half. What? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3 and a half. And it's an open circle. Ooh, double open circle there. There's no value that satisfies this, this one at 5, but that's okay. That can happen. As long as there's not two of them, then it's not a function. Now, I'm going to apply a slope of one half, and there's a couple things I can do here. I could just go up one, right two, and just kind of bounce on the halves. There's nothing wrong with that. You, did you know you could also go up a half and right one? Oh my gosh, pro, pro move right there. Uh, up one, right two. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. Actually, you should. Um, 
so again, I could go up one, right two, and I'm in, I'm in half land, or I can go up a half, right one, because all slopes could be written as a fraction. Oh my gosh, you can write a fraction with a fraction. Yeah, either way, you end up with this. Okay, so there's my piecewise functions. What are we graphing? Where are we graphing it? All right, uh, this is actually number one from the homework, and the reason I want to start with it, and now you're all like, give me the homework, give me the homework. Just wait, hold your jets. All right, put that in there. I get a negative two and three. So I'm going to go to negative two and three, and I'm going to have an open circle, and I'm going to the left. So I'm going, this red one's going to the left. So I have a slope of one. So I'm going to go here, and you're going to do this, and you're going to get this one, and this is number one on your homework. Because I get a question every time. So if you're doing this with a substitute, they're going to thank you because everybody would have the same question. I'm here to help. All right, then we can do uh, f of negative 2 is equal to positive 4 minus 1 is 3. <gasps> I gotta go to the same point. I gotta go to negative two, three, and there's an open circle there, but now they're telling me to fill it in. Then fill it in. Who cares if you don't, if you have a pencil, which you should all be using, it doesn't matter that the open circle was red and the blue circle, it's just filled in, it doesn't matter. And now we're gonna apply a slope of negative two, and we are going to the right with the blue one. I'm gonna go um, negative slopes go down, so I'm gonna go down two, right one, down two, uh, right one, and then we go this way. So it was open, and now it's closed. Let's assume I connected those. And again, we can look at the graph for three. Oh, I didn't go far enough. So I can go up here. Uh, if I'm putting a three in, I'm going to be on the bottom one because three is greater than negative two. Negative six minus one, negative seven. And it would be negative seven over here if I continued on. Negative four is less than two, so it'll be up on top. It's one. And negative two... I have to use the bottom one, but I get the same point. I get the negative 2, 3, because it ended up getting filled in. Good luck on that homework. Um, it, might, uh, it might tell you to do a domain and range. Don't do that right now. We'll do that another time. Uh, also, they're going to ask you, is it a function? All of these are functions. They're all piecewise functions. So we are worried about completing the graph and finding the values in the back pages. You have to write the graph. What are we graphing and where are we graphing it? Good luck.